Hello, this is Guava Moment, playing Space Chem. Uh, now, Space Chem is my favorite game of all time, but it can be very confusing for new people. So I've made these videos just to hopefully give you a little taste of what the gameplay is like, so you can at least try to understand what's going on. Basically, our every map, you're staring at a reactor kind of like this. You're given an input on the left, and what you need to do is move it to the output on the right. In this case, you're literally taking the input and shoving it into the output. What mo you'll be doing in every other mission, more or less, is taking the input, doing some fancy things to it, which I'll explain, and then outputting it. So what we have are these red and blue Waldos. They'll accomplish our uh, reactor design for us. So we need to create one of these oxygens in our input zone, the input alpha. So we use the input alpha command. And as we see, when we run time forward, the red Waldo moves, see that again, hits the input alpha, creates this oxygen here. Uh, now these, this uh, oxygen molecule not going to do anything until we grab it with our Waldo. So let's see what red ha what does. It grabs the molecule. Oh, but it bashes into the wall. So uh, what we need to do is create a little bit of a loop here so that we can drop it in the output zone. So now we've dropped the oxygen in the output zone. To actually output it, we need to use the output psi command now that it's in the correct location. Output, and we've, we've done this one of ten times. So we need to do this ten times. Best way to do that, create a loop so that it can just keep going until we've completed the mission. Okay, we did that in 136 cycles using eight symbols. A lot of the fun of the space cam is trying to optimize your solution to make it faster. For instance, I could move this command over here, or move this loop like that. It's a little bit tighter. And we'll see. That saved us some time. It's only 118 cycles now. Some other commands you can use are, whoops, uh, let's say, rotate. When you hit the rotate command, you rotate the molecule around the axis of your of where the Waldo is. So we put a couple down here. We can see it in action. So that's the rotate command. This level is exactly the same thing, except we're moving hydrogen over, but now we're using input beta zone and output omega zone, which you can't really see underneath the tutorial here. So blue goes, inputs beta, grabs, drops, outputs omega, and does that ten times. Now one thing to note that a lot of people don't pick up right away is that uh, red isn't alpha and psi only. For example, we can make all of these commands blue, so now, or red, so red can input beta and output omega. And similarly, blue can do output alpha, or sorry, input alpha, output psi. Every command can be uh, done by any Waldo. Here's a slightly more complicated one. We have platinum down in the beta, we need to move it to the psi. We've got a gold atom in the alpha, we need to move it down to omega. So you can have both Waldos going at the same time. Hopefully that makes sense. So now we can talk about bonding. Every atom in the periodic table of the elements has a bonding number. For example, hydrogen, one bond. Uh, let's see, aluminum, four bonds. I'll use this thing here to uh, illustrate it. So here we've got a hydrogen atom. It can have one bond. And we put another hydrogen next to it, and now there's a bond. Now it forms a molecule. We can try to make more bonds, but it doesn't actually work, because hydrogen can only have one bond. Now both of these, one bond, it's a fully stable atom. Something like oxygen can have two bonds. So you can have two hydrogens off of it. Each hydrogen has one bond, and the oxygen has two bonds. We can have oxygen hanging off like that, but we can also double bond. So now oxygen has a double bond, and this is a stable molecule, since oxygen has a bonding number of two. Something like carbon has a bonding number of four. 
So between two carbon atoms, you can have a single bond, you can have a double bond, you can even have a triple bond, and then still have more stuff hanging off of that. So this is acetylene. Every atom has a full bonding number now. Hydrogen 1, carbon 4, 4, 1. So now that we know about bonds and bonding numbers, we can do our first puzzle that involves bonding. What we have is silver in the alpha zone, fluorine in the beta zone. And what we need to do is bond them together to make silver fluoride. We do that with these bonders here. Let's, uh, let's do this. Let's create a fluorine. Grab it. Head on up to the silver atom here and input it. So we've got our fluorine. Let's move this here so it's a little clearer. Here's the silver. Oh, but they collide. It's because they haven't been bonded. We do that with these bonders here. And the bond command. So see what happens. Hits the bond command. Now it forms a bond between them and we can move the whole molecule together. Just drop it in the output zone. Create your output command. And this should work. Some things to note is that if you have extra, try to have extra bonds formed between atoms, it didn't work. It said max bonds. Because fluorine's maximum bonding number is 1, it can't create another bond. Even though silver has a bond number of 3, it can. It goes by the minimum, so it's okay to try to have extra bonds. Well, now that we know how to create bonds, we can also remove bonds. Here we'll have blue grab this fluorine molecule. Let's drop it on top of the bonders. Or no, let's not. Let's move it over here. Debond it. Hit the bond minus. See what happens. So it moves along. It's the bond minus over the bonders. Removes the bond between the fluorine atoms. Since we want single atoms to be outputted, we can actually do this. So now there are two atoms sitting in the psi output zone. Blue will try to... whoop, that's the wrong one. Now blue will try to output them. If uh, things are not connected, if there's individual atoms here, or individual molecules even, each one will individually get outputted. Since both were acceptable outputs, I'm 2 out of 10 now. For the level. Something I didn't make quite clear is that you don't have to have your bond command sitting on top of bonders. So if we see right here, blue drops the fluorine here, it's still connected, then it hits the bonder command. Uh, when it hits these bond commands, it fires all of the bonders in the reactor, and we see now it removed the bonds between the fluorines. So you don't have to have your bond command sitting on top of bonders. Uh, the final basic gameplay element is uh, production assignments. That's where you get to place reactors and design pipelines and things. Inside this reactor, it's the same thing as we know of, except it doesn't have standard inputs or outputs. You have to create them by connecting pipes up to the reactor. So we've put hydrogen into, up into the top pipe. It shows up here. Chlorine in the bottom pipe, and our output connected to the hydrochloric acid. And now it's just like as we saw before. Grab, input the chlorine, bond, drop in the output zone, and output. Uh, the only rub is that it's trying to input an alpha but can't because, let's start it again, the hydrogen from these tanks actually takes time to move. So it's got one, oh, but now it has to wait for the chlorine. Now it bonds. You know, that's the kind of game this is. You make stupid mistakes a little bit. That was the wrong symbol. Seems to be going fine now. That's because out in the world we've got kind of a backlog in our pipes now. There we go, that was 651 cycles. Uh, with these levels, whoops, these levels you can uh, save time just by 
well, redesigning the inside of the reactors, but you can also redesign the outputs a little bit. Let's, if I move that down one, let's see what happens. It's the same exact solution, just move the pipes a little bit. Well, let's save two cycles. And, uh... That works a little bit better. Uh, it'd probably be faster to uh, do a bunch of things, like have blue also go. Let's try that. I'll have the exact same solution. Blue will be doing exactly the same things. And let's see what happens if we run these together. Blue and red are both trying to input an alpha, but red actually goes first in case if there's a... Th if blue and red are both trying to do something at the exact same time, red always goes first. So now we have two identical solutions going in tandem. One will run this to completion. 415 cycles! That's only three away from the best I've ever done! Well, so there you go. That's pretty much the basic commands for Space Cam. Uh, it does, there will be more things included later on, but I'll include tutorial videos for those. If you're at all interested in this tournament or playing the game yourself, you really should get the demo off of Steam. It's a fantastic game, and the demo has a ridiculous amount of content. It'll take you a long time to get through it. The demo, I believe, has what each one of these circles is a level. I showed you a couple. It has the first three worlds, so that's a whole lot of, whole lot of levels you can play on the demo. Well, I hope you enjoyed this, and I look forward to seeing you in the tournament. This has been Guava Moment.